Good morning and welcome to another edition of Badass Marketing. I am joined by my co-host, uh, Angela Duns. Angela, how are you this morning? I am doing super well. Thanks for asking, Mike. How about you? I am good. It is the middle of the summer and... Um, shocking. It's so mid, shocking. Mid-year, mid-summer, mid-mid-mid. Oh my God. Um, kind of hard to believe we're this far along. I'm guessing yep. it'll be Christmas before we know it. Denial, denial, denial. <laughs> there you go. Um, so what are we going to talk about today? We are going to talk about Google business and what it can do for your, you know, I think it's something that is so ignored and so underutilized. And so I really want to share some best practices about how you can get back on that bandwagon. I think people have sort of a fits and starts approach to using it. And, you know, how can we, how much time do we need to spend on it? You know, what are the absolute necessary things that we need to do? Um, you know, getting current uh, testimonials on there is something that we just we just don't do enough of, and that's how you keep your rankings. Yeah, I mean, you know, that is a lot to unwrap, but you know, there's <laughs> clearly a lot of areas to talk about. Um, you know, we have always been strong advocates for the Google page and the Google business. Um, you know, it's gone through a couple iterations. It used to be Google My Business. It's now Google Business Page. Um, you know, I think it's an incredibly valuable resource for local SEO and local. Um, and we know that, you know, if you look at some of the statistics that come out about search, something like 85% of searches are result in a purchase within five miles. So there is this hyper-local focus when it comes to search, you know, if I'm hungry, you know, I'm not interested in something that's far away. I want something, you know, some reasonable immediate gratification. So pizza near me, you know, if I'm looking for a bank near me, those types of things. Um, and, you know, the Google profile, I think it is tremendously powerful um, because not only does it list your business, but it has some of the general information. Um, I was looking for something the other day and it was just to verify whether or not the place was open. And of course I went to Google, their Google, Google business page to check out their hours. Um, even if you go to someone's homepage, you have to go find where they posted their hours, wherever they've set up their website. Whereas if I go to Google, I know exactly where it is and it pops up right away so I can verify that indeed they're open or not. Um, so I, I recently had an experience like that too. I was told that I should, um, you know, for all this physical therapy and rehab that I'm doing, I was told that I needed to see a rolfer and I don't know where to look for. I don't have a clue how to find a rolfer near me. <laughs> I did. That's exactly what I did. And seriously, the one that I, I, I actually had a conversation with three different ones, but the one that I ended up choosing had all kinds of certifications. And those are what came up in Yelp and Google My Business was a lot of the key words from his certifications. And I'm mm. going to tell you, he's fantastic. I had no idea that Rolfing was a thing. He's really good. Oh, no, it's a thing. <laughs> Was it well, painful? It's, it's, um, no, it wasn't. It, okay. it really, so I think there are a lot of misconceptions. Well, you know, and I'm in a very, I'm very vulnerable right now and in a lot of pain. And I walked out of there with the most fluid motion I've had in two years. And so, so it was what about worth the, the search. Google, so what about the Google um, experience resonated with you well i was able to look at other people's um testimonials about him and he had no testimonials on his website he just that's just not his thing um he's european it just, <laughs> you know that braggadocious american attitude is just not his deal um so but he had testimonials on his google page yes yes not on his website okay. um and it was seeing that list of certifications gave me a confidence that none of those other rolfers could give me. They seemed like they did 15 other things behind besides rolfing. And I was just 
not interested in that. So it really helped me narrow down my search. I mean, I had no idea what I was looking for. I had no idea what I was looking for. But when I saw those certifications, that made a big difference to me. Okay. So for you, the, the certifications validated that this person's professional and... Well, and what people said about okay. it, about not being in pain when they left and, you know, having fluid motion and that kind of thing. I, I didn't know what I was looking for. <laughs> I seriously didn't. I got educated by looking at people's Yelp and Google My Business page. And, and do you have a Google Business page? I do, but it's sad. Sadly, it's skimpy. I mean, what's interesting is I have found just personally, I have found that we always make sure there is a Google page. We, you know, spend a fair amount of time making sure it's current, getting testimonials. Um, and, you know, like the interesting thing is I'm not sure about the conversion from it. Um, and it, it could be that it just doesn't come directly from there. So I don't know. And I don't have any kind of tracking code that would tell me it's coming from there. Um, cause there could be people who are checking it out like you've done and then, and then, then contact directly. And I'm not aware that they went to the Google page first. Um, right. Well, can I ask an ignorant question? Sure. Is one of the major functions of a Google business page for you to come up and search wherever you might be found? I mean, I, I think the, the main function, of you know, I think the relevance of Google business is locality and the local aspect of it. So, you know, I know that when I do a search, it's going to show me what's nearby and, you know, it's tied into Google maps, which is, you know, another big search function. So, you know, if you, if I searched for Rolfers, I would get a different list than you got because of we're in different right. locations. Right. So it's, you know, it's not going to increase your visibility outside of your area but if you you know there is a hyper local focus to it which is tremendously important because that's actually where most searches go is hyper local right so for brick and mortar and local sort of businesses mom and pop places it's essential it is essential um one i i think it's a validation right it's just one of those you know like having a website right. you, you know are you on google you know are are people re giving you reviews and things like that um you know, so I think it's validation. Two, like I said, it just really encapsulates all the basic information that is important, such as your opening hours, your location, the map, right. on Google Maps, so you can find it. Um, so I think Phone from number. A, yep. So I think if you are a local business that is highly dependent on local traffic, Google is the place. Google Business is the place for you. Um, you know. Unlike Yelp, it's it's not a pay to play. So, you know, it's there, it's available. Um, you know, obviously the advantage of, of Google Business is you can tie it into all your other products. So if you're doing an advertising campaign, Google Maps, um, you know, those tools are readily available and can, you know, increase visibility as well. But as a basic and as a minimum, you should be on Google Business. Yes. Agreed. <laughs> You know, and the, the interesting thing, like, so we had a client and um, they had gotten a bad review, right? which was kind of interesting. And like, so, you know, sort of understanding the review process and understand, you know, they have one bad review and probably a hundred or so good reviews. So I think it's fine. You know what I mean? And the person who wrote the view was just sort of unhappy that they had to wait because there are other people in the store. And it's just like, that's, you know. That's, That's the, the reality of things these days. A small business, yeah. So, like, I don't think it, you know, but the on the other hand, I'm always skeptical of reviews. Um, you know, you and I were just talking about a company. It was like, well, who wrote the reviews? You know, because a lot of times companies will, you know, pad their own reviews. So I think view, reviews are taken with a grain of salt, but I think they are important aspects of, you know, tools like Google Business because people do look for the reviews, good or bad. But, you know, and I actually don't mind reading the bad reviews because it gives me a sense of like, you know, is this a legitimate business? You know, is it just an unhappy customer? Right. 
you know, because you're going to get them occasionally. So, you know, a bad review isn't necessarily a death knell. It's just, you know, no. you want to understand no. why there was a bad review. There are days that, you know, people call in sick, you're understaffed, whatever the situation might be. And some people are just not happy. <laughs> some people are looking for a reason, you know what I mean? So it, it's, you know, it's interesting. But, you know, and to further our, you know, mantra, which is, you know, omnichannel, you know, this is another channel that's yes. available for you to, you know, promote and validate your business. So Google business, you know, is an absolute in our portfolio. You know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's interesting because we've seen a tremendous amount of business come from it and then we see drop off. So it's like everything else. It just sort of, it ebbs and flows for us. Cycles. Well, I have yeah. a question for you. No, I've always kind of looked at my Google business page as kind of a set it and forget it until something changes mm -hmm. sort of strategy. Would you care to comment about that? Yeah. I mean, what's interesting is I went through a period of time where we were posting content to, you know, so that there was fresh content as well. Um, and I know that at times it was difficult to post content, like it would reject it for no reason or, or stuff like that. Um, uh. And I found that, you know, the content didn't make a tremendous amount of difference. Um, you know, one, being there mattered. And then but secondly, you... getting the reviews matters. So if you're going to focus on Google business, I would say the primary two areas are make sure your profile is complete and filled out. And then the other aspect. And your is, hours are correct and all of yeah, that make sure, you know, stuff. Make sure it's all there that, you know, they can you know, there's contact information, there's hours, there's, you know, we do um, use it when we know that we're going to be closed for a holiday or something like that. Um, yes. You know, as a mean, people will look there. Um, and then, you know, try to encourage your, you know, customers to leave a review because it, it does help. People like to read those, um, you know, and at some point I think it becomes sort of irrelevant. Like we had, you know, 300 plus reviews, they all said we were wonderful. So it's like, eh, you know, nothing new per se, right? Um, so I don't know, like, you know, the difference between 300 good reviews and 400 good reviews is like, it just is, right? Right. And nobody's going to read either 300 or 400. No, they look for your overall rank, which is, you know, obviously right. it's pretty good. So that kind of thing. <laughs> Yes. So can you speak a little bit more to the, the cycles, the ebbs and flows? Have you noticed any reasons for that? I mean, you know, there's always, you know, lots of reasons. I, I think that, you know, the algorithms change, which causes ebbs and flows and, you know, depending on what they're focused on. Um, you know, we always come up in local search, which is tremendously important. Um but then it kind of depends on what else is going on. We've been having the discussion around generative AI, especially within the search pages. And, you know, every day you read an article where generative AI will change search. And I do believe that because, you know, Google just did something in the news where they're like, they're going to aggregate news. So like you can get your news directly from Google and like, you know, what happens to Huffington Post, what happens to, all the other news sources because the information will now be available on Google. Um, so Google is looking to dominate that space. And it also does that when it comes to responses. Um, one of the interesting things that I've recently noticed on generative AI is in the description of whatever I'm looking at, particularly if it's a product, it will tell me where it's available now. Right. So, um, you know, we have a, as you know, we have a tequila client and we're searching and, you know, information about various tequilas that we're researching and considering, you know, a lot of times included in the generative AI response is where can we buy these? So if you are a business and you're on that, you know, it's in the generative response that you have this product that would be helpful. Um, yes. You know, and so did it, you know, Mike, that today is National Tequila Day? I did know that. <laughs> I figured you did. We did. So, uh, yeah, that one we knew about. Yeah, that's that's so interesting. Yeah. And so 
we've been talking a little bit about, you know, locale and product and that sort of thing. So what can a Google business page do for service providers? Well, I mean, you know, what's going to happen is if the person that is looking for the type of service that you provide is in your area, you're going to show up and you're going to show up, you know, towards the top of the ranking, um, you know, and, you know, it'll appear on Google Maps, it'll appear on Google Search. Um, and your you know, reviews so, are there if you have any. Yeah, yeah. So it's all going to appear, you know, Google does a very good job at aggregating across the different tools that it uses to present that information. Absolutely. And so, so does it matter at all if you have links on your Google business page and, you know, let's say on your Facebook business page or something, you have a link to the Google page. Do those links help with the search at all? I don't think so. I mean, Google doesn't need a link from me. And, you know, like, so, you know, I don't know that it's necessarily- Well, you have tons help. of content. <laughs> right. but, but what I'm saying is, you know, Google ranks just fine. So it doesn't need an external link to link back to Google, right? So Google's okay. going to always be dominant. Um, you know, the Google's going to show Google results, particularly if you have a Google profile or any sort of Google ad, that will show immediately, regardless of whether you're linking from other places such as Facebook or uh, elsewhere. Um, you know- I what's interesting is I, I think what's happening is that Google is causing people not to go to web pages to read information, but to go to web pages when they're ready for they've already made the decision that's where they want to go. That's um, interesting behavior. And yeah, I let me, let me totally believe you're right. Unwrap that a little bit, right? And meaning that. You know, typically what would happen is, if, you know, pre-generative AI, I'd make a search. Google would send me back 10, you know, 10 links. I'd start clicking on the links, looking at their pages and stuff like that. Um, I don't need to do that anymore because now with the generative AI summary, I get the information I have. And then it'll tell me it's available here or this is the provider. Um, so what I think is happening is that, you know, secondary step of doing further research outside of Google is no longer necessary. Um, that it's going to drive more warm leads versus people looking for additional information. Tire kickers. Yeah. Um, so you may get less traffic as a result of generative AI. But it'll be but higher the traffic quality. that you get will be further along. In their yes. Oh, that's so interesting. That's so interesting. And, you know, higher quality leads is what everybody wants. It is. I mean, you know, it, it's really interesting, like, where you look at the metrics. And, you know, do you care? Like, so if you get 10 leads, do you care if it was from 100 referrals or 1,000 referrals? The 10 it's leads still 10, 10 leads. leads. Right. So, you know, if you get less traffic from Google, but again, they are further in their process, you know, do you care that you're getting less traffic as long as the the end result is basically the same or better? Right. It's a much better conversation. Yeah, I, I believe that people are further down the road once they've decided to leave Google and visit your site or, or go to you directly. Um, you know what I mean? So, well, that's you know, good. I think that's a good thing. That's encouraging. It is, um, but you will receive, overall, you'll receive less traffic. Well, and you know that I am one of those people that just screams about vanity metrics. You know, I, I don't care how many clicks you got. How much business did you get? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, having come from, you know, the funnel marketing days, you know, we do know that the numbers are the numbers, right? Yes. Um, you know, you X amount of numbers go into the top of the funnel. You know, some percentage of that converts, uh, converts to the next and will make its way through. And what we've historically known is, you know, if I need 10 at the bottom, I have to put a thousand at the top. You know what I mean? And so at least I knew what to drive to the top in order to get my ultimate metric. Um, you know, so 
you know, I'm not going to discount all those metrics. I still think it's important to understand what your conversion rate looks like. It's just, it's going to shift or it's going to change as a result of, you know, generative AI that you will see less overall traffic and maybe higher conversion because they're further along. And are you, do you think because of generative AI, we're seeing a little bit more disruption in the numbers and the consistency of the numbers? You know, what I, we I put mean, the in disruption at the top. Is the traffic is not going, you know, the traffic is not leaving Google, right? So I would say a large percentage, you know, when I search for something, if it, especially if it's, you know, there's a summary in the generative AI, that may be all I needed, you know? It, you know, if I... I, you know, searching for a song or something like that, and it gives me that information. I don't need to go to the next place. It's it's all available right. and presented in front of me. Um, so what I think we'll see is an overall sort of decline in just referral traffic for the for information. Um, whereas, you know, you'll be listed at, potentially as a source, and if people are interested in what you're offering, they will, you know, based on the information they see on generative AI, they'll they'll move to you. Or, or just visit you directly, depending on where you are. Right, right. Oh, it's such an interesting thing to stay on top of, for sure. Um, I, I mean, for me, the, it, it kind of comes down to this is another omni-channel touch point. Um, you know, when we talk to our clients, depending on the clients, where they come from is just kind of, you know, some of our retail clients come from Instagram. They just do. They, I saw you on Instagram. They don't see us on Google because they're not searching. What they're doing is they're scrolling, um, which is a different behavior. So, you know, I, you know, rather than trying to figure out what's the right place for all these people and what's the right mode, you know, we would prefer to try to blanket an omni-channel approach of making sure that we're all there in all the different places and then figure out once we are in place where the traffic is coming from. I have a totally unrelated question, um, but you know, you were saying that you didn't notice much of a difference with the content on the page. Do you recommend that people put a couple quintessential pieces of content just for those people who will read them? You know, again, kind of that set it and forget it. Yeah. Um, I, I would say it probably can't hurt. Um, you know, like I said, my experience is, you know, we posted blogs on, on the Google page and I don't know that that ever resulted in a conversion. Um, that doesn't mean that people didn't read them and like, oh, you know, this, and, you, you know, that used it to validate us. Um, you know, I, I think for us, it's more of a question of, where is your target audience? Are they searching for you for Google? Are they trying to, you know, connect with you on LinkedIn? You know, are they scrolling pictures? So it's really going to be a function of where is your target target audience anyway? And if that happens to be one of the places they look for you, then sure, add more information. Um, if you, as a rule, find that you're that's not where your clients are, then don't spend a lot of time there. Right. Right. You know. There just there are certain platforms that are just better for different types of businesses, right? You know, we know we're looking at LinkedIn for B two B. We know that Instagram is a great B two C type of channel, you know, where people are promoting. Yes. You know, and especially if it's a visual, um, you know. And then, what I would say is, if your business relies on local search, you need to be on Google Business. If you get your clients from local search. That's where Google Business is key to you. Makes sense. It totally makes sense. She's nodding on a podcast. You can't nod on a podcast. <laughs> well, I'm speechless. You know, and part of the reason why I'm asking that contact question is because I haven't spent a lot of time working on my Google business page and you just absolved me of some of the guilt of not posting things onto my Google business page, you know, my business, <laughs> it, well, and it's so funny because, it, you know, my business development coach asked me, where did your last 10 clients come from? And I'm going to tell you, I don't think any of them looked at my website. <laughs> I'm just, I'm going to tell you, I think that's, you know, I built my business on LinkedIn and I think and it's important because, to understand that. 
Yes. And I think because I'm a, a LinkedIn consultant, that is the valid place for them to look. Yeah. You know, we want to, you know, we want to spend less time trying to redirect people from where they normally want to be. Right. So, you know, trying to get them to go to your Google page when they're, when they would typically look for you on LinkedIn, why would you go through that effort? You know where they are, you know, target your messaging, at, you know, for where your audience is. Um, you know, in the beginning, you may not know where your audience is. So you need to sort of put it out there. Um, the setup is nominal and it's free. So why not do it just in case somebody looks for you there? Um, but if it's not the primary venue for your target audience, then why would you spend a lot of time there? Yeah. The, the first SEO person that I worked with, and that's a number of years ago, it's probably a good four years ago. She was just adamant that you work really hard on your Google business page. <laughs> she just had a whole checklist and a formula and wow, she was just, I mean, that was the main thing that we did. Uh, you know, I would say we were at that point, probably about that time frame as well, where we thought, but, and, and I still agree, if you're hyper-local and your business is dependent on local search, then absolutely, you should do that. Um, but, you, you know, I don't think it's the answer to all businesses. I think it's a, a specific group of businesses that benefit from the local aspect of what they're offering. Yeah. You know and I mean? local certainly helps me, but I am a global business. I work with people all over the world. Well, I, you know, and, and I think the other thing maybe that, you know, sort of mediates the local aspect is, you know, you can conduct business via Zoom. So your location is, is irrelevant, right? You know, yes. there is, you know, there's very little difference when you're dealing with a client in the Bay Area versus a client in New York other than a time zone, right? Right, you know, yes. So we have clients on the East Coast. We don't do anything different. However, you know, if I were a pizza place, clearly I'm not going to make a delivery out of state. So you know, right. and people will look for what's pizza near me or good pizza near me, you know. So, you know, if there is a local aspect, and I, I don't think service providers necessarily are limited by that local aspect, because you can provide service via Zoom or where, whatever to anyone, and, and it doesn't change it. Um, but, you know, if I'm looking for a plumber, I'm not looking for a guy the next state over. I'm looking for somebody who's local. If I'm looking for pizza, I want one right. relatively close because I want, you know, some gratif instant gratification. So, yes. you know, for the Google business, it's, you know, if you're hyper local, that's the place to be. Yes. Um, but the well, other this... thing is people do read it because, you know, I've had, you know, especially with some of our retail clients where I've had people like, hey, it says you opened at 10 o'clock and you, you know, you know, I have a client that, you know, travels to his business. So he may occasionally be late and there'll be someone at his door and like Google said you opened at 10 o'clock, you know, and like he shows up at 1020 and they're, they're annoyed. <laughs> it's like yes. Google said you were open, you know, those types of things. So, you know, people and I understand that. that. Yes. Yeah, because people do read that. Um, and a lot of the, the folks, it's a specialty business. So a lot of people travel to the business and then they expect it to be open. Right. So, right. you know, we, it, we, um, recently the store was closed for a, a family event. Um, and, you know, we spent a couple of weeks beforehand, like notifying people like, okay, pay attention. We're not going to be, you know, don't show up here because we're, we're going to be closed that day. And, you know, really spent a considerable amount of time making sure people knew that we weren't open that day. So they weren't frustrated or, you know, so we put it on Google business. Um, you know, we put it on a couple of our social channels. So, you know, that people weren't upset that Google said we were open and we weren't. Yeah. And Google is really good about that because even me as a service provider, I get notifications, you know, before the 4th of July or Labor Day, you know, is your business going to be open? you know so that you can change your hours for those specific days and stuff like that right. so it, it is convenient and and like i said i do know that people do look at that because we we get feedback on that especially if it says one thing and we did something else they're quick to tell us <laughs> or remind us like you know your google profile said you were open yes anyway. yes 
So if you are hyperlocal, uh, let's run through just the, the basics of what somebody should do. What are the priorities? I mean, obviously you want to be on Google business and, you know, you want to have, you know, fill out the information and description, um, figure out your keywords, what people are looking for when they're searching for your type of business, and then fill out the information. How can they contact you? What, where is the website? Um, you know, what are your hours, which are, are tremendously important so that people know when to get a hold of you. And then on top of that, you know, what we do is we ask our clients, you know, if you enjoyed the experience, please leave a review. Um, if they haven't enjoyed the experience, they may leave a review too, um, either way. But, you know, you know, the idea is to remind them. I mean, we're not, you know, we're not writing the reviews for them. We're not creating reviews for ourselves, but we do ask our, client, our clients, like, you know, if you had a good experience or, you know, or otherwise, please, you know, leave us a review. And certainly the holidays thing. Oh, right. Me, making sure your information is correct, up, updated, timely, that type of thing. Exactly. And now, how if you're a pizza place and you're hyper local, how important are pictures? Um, I, you know, I mean, I would say they're very important, but they're on, on your Instagram profile, not on Google Business. I'm not saying you shouldn't put pictures there. And then, you know, what's interesting is, Google does have the image search, so you can look for images. Um, you know, I'm hard pressed to think of an example where an image made the difference. What well, they're interested in is I'm just is, thinking are of you me. Open, are you in those types of more than yeah. a picture? If they want to look at pretty I, pictures, they're looking at Instagram. It, well, that's true. Um, but I'm thinking for me, you know, if I know what the storefront looks like, it gives me a search image if I'm in a neighborhood that I'm not familiar with. Uh, and like I said, I'm su I'm suggesting that you do print your images. Um, I'm just, like I said, sort of the difference between like, you know, would you take a picture of your pizza and put it on Google or put it on Instagram? I put it on Instagram. <laughs> For sure. Right. Um, but, you know, that's not to say that like the front of, you know, because part of your profile is exterior pictures, interior pictures, on Google business um, and definitely do that, especially if, you know, people are going to be traveling and they're trying to find your storefront. There's a picture of it that should help. Yes. Yes. I've gone to quite a few new places recently and seriously, it's, it's comforting to know what I'm looking for. It is. The, the challenge is that the information, like a lot of times the, you know, you may have, you know, the images on Google are older you know, depending on like if it was Google Maps or something, and like doesn't even look like that anymore. So, you know, that's another reason to post your pictures because you may, you know, the Google Maps picture may be three or four years old. Right, right. And not accurate. Yeah. So interesting. So what would you say for service providers? What is what is their minimum point of entry for that? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't spend a lot of time on Google Business for Service Providers. I don't think that's the primary place that people, you know, it's, you know, we know how different people search for things, right? You know, if I'm looking for pizza, I'm going to go on Google and search near, near me, right? If I'm looking for a lawyer, I'm not sure that's the criteria I'm going to use, where I will likely look for some sort of referral or look for somebody on a on, um, platform like LinkedIn. Um, and look know, up I mean, super lawyers. <laughs> well, I mean, we were, I was looking for a lawyer um, a couple of weeks ago that did alcohol beverages in Alaska. <laughs> Very specific, right? Um, yes. You, you know what I mean? So, you know, and that wasn't a local search, obviously, because we're not in Alaska. So, um, you know, for service providers, I think you should have a presence there because I think you should have a pre omni channel. You should have a presence everywhere. Um, it's a tool. It's a tool it's like a tool, everything. Else. But I, I wouldn't, you know, I don't think it's a primary tool, and I don't think it's a, you know, again, it's where is your audience? Is your audience looking for a lawyer on Google? If they are, they're probably in trouble. <laughs> um, or are they doing word of mouth and or some other sourcing for you know 
it, you know, if I'm looking for a professional, I'm probably going to look for my, to my network. Like, do you know somebody, you know, right. versus a Google thing. That's not to say that if you refer me to somebody, I might not check out their profile and make sure that they have, you know, decent reviews or at least no big red flag negative reviews. Right. You know what I mean? So, you know, I think the Google profile is sort of like a website might validate what I'm looking for or help yes. me validate. It won't be the primary source for finding that individual, but it may be a source to validate some of the information I've heard about that individual. Right. Right. Well, that helps. That definitely helps. I, cool. I, I have been thinking about working on my Google My Business page, and it's probably adequate as it is. You know, knowing the nature of your business, I wouldn't think that's really where people go to look for you. Right. And I have, I have reviews. I have all that stuff. I have some postings there. You know, hours are not that important to me, but I do have specific hours that I see clients and prospects. So I have that all up to date. Yeah. I mean, what's interesting is, you know, like the hours thing, because I'm a service provider, we tend to use Calendly more and, and sort of say, okay, you know, you can schedule a call with us during these particular times um, versus our Google listing, which says we're open from 10 to 6. You know, I'm not available 10 to 6. Our, our business is here and, you know, you're welcome to contact us. Um, but, you know, my Calendly is more specific where like there's a block of hours. Exactly. You know, twice yes. a week where appointments are available. Right. Right. Um, so, you know, I think it's a different audience and it's a different place. So, you know, the hours that I post on Google business aren't necessarily indicative of the hours that you can schedule an appointment with me. Right. Right. But for a retailer, those are important. I mean, you know, you're open. They're you know, vital. Up on time, you know, those types of things. Yes. So any parting thoughts, Mike? I mean, I, I, I think it's a valuable tool. Again, you know, I think that particularly if your your audience is local and they're looking local, and a lot we know a large percentage of people are looking for local because they're looking to solve something, you know, and we know that most of the people will make a purchase within five miles. So there's a giant audience for that, and you should be on Google. Um, is it for everybody? Probably, you know. I would put it out there from the omni-channel approach, but I wouldn't spend a lot of time as a service provider promoting my business through that. I don't know that it's all that effective. Um, you know, so I think it's dependent on where is your audience naturally. If your audience is not, you know, searching for you on Google, then you probably need to target your messaging other places. That's an excellent summary. There you what go. are we going to discuss next week? Um, what are we going to discuss next week? What would you like to discuss? I'm going to throw it back. Well, I, I really do kind of like this whole community building idea. You know, it's, and I think it's, I don't think that people really understand what it means. And that is also an omni-channel opportunity. And I, I think it's a good topic. I, I agree. We're, we're big on the community building aspect, and we I think that it will become even more important yes. as you know generative AI yes. starts to replace our ability to rank online. You know, maybe we go we go old school. <laughs> we go back, and we actually start meeting people and and start talking to one another. Um, you know, and that's yes. a clear means of differentiating <laughs> from what our competition is doing. I think that's an excellent topic for next time. So we will talk about communities next time. Woohoo! Angela, as always, pleasure to speak with you. Good to see you. And we will look forward to Good talking, talking with you. you and hearing your wisdom, Mike. <laughs> Some weeks are better than others, but it is what it is. <laughs> no, this All one right. was very clear. Very clear. I like it. Good. All right. It was good to see you. And we'll see everybody on the next episode of Badass Marketing. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody.